It's another Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. How do you feel on Mondays? A lot of people who watch this are retired. Mm -hmm. Although I, I maybe half. I don't know. I, I I don't have a way of knowing you that. Actually, shouldn't. I'm kind of guessing. Um, <laughs> Mondays still are the beginning of a week. It's still kind of odd. So I got to dismiss this. Notifications coming. I should have turned that off. Um, we're going to think about work today. So we're going to sing, How Clear Is Our Vocation, Lord, number 853. And it is one of my favorite songs. I really love it. And hey, listen to these words. It talks about our, our calling, so our labor, but not just our occupation, but whatever God is calling us to do in our life and following him. Uh, that involves labor, and it involves cares and troubles, but but God blesses them and makes them worthwhile, gives them value. So number 800, 853. How clear is our vocation, Lord, when once we heed your call. To live according to your word And daily learn, refreshed, restored That you are Lord of all And will not let us fall But if forgetful we should find Your yoke is hard to bear if worldly pressures fray the mind And love itself cannot unwind This tangled skate of care Our inward life repair We marvel how your saints become In hindrances more sure Whose joyful virtues put to shame A casual way we wear your name And by our faults obscure Your power to cleanse and cure In what you give us, Lord, to do Together or alone in old routines or ventures new, may we not cease to look to you across you long upon all you and ever done. We read from Matthew chapter 25 at verse 14, where Jesus tells the parable of the talents. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His servant said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. 
you have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant! You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. My understanding of this has evolved. <laughs> you know, when you're a kid or, or a young man, I always thought this is a stock market thing, right? You get this money and you go and you just make more money and it's, uh, it's bloodless, it's sweatless, it's, uh, it's effortless. Um, like you imagine that people working in offices, you know, it's air conditioned and they don't really do anything, right? I mean, people working in offices, uh, um, brokerages, uh, um, I had a good friend who, who, uh, had a grain elevator, did a little of this trading, you know, of commodities and, um, it's a very clean sort of work and you think it's easy and stress-free and you just make money just money just comes right and then you grow up and you get a chance to do a little of this a little of that or you, you, you get in a position of leadership or responsibility um maybe you get the corner office or whatever and you realize i'm working my tail off my my father emphasized this he, he wanted to start his own business at last because he was tired of somebody else being his boss and he wanted to have it done the right way. He wanted to do it his way, you know, and, and uh, be his own boss. And he said, now everybody's my boss. And he worked, I, I thought he worked terribly long hours when he was foreman of a tool shop. But when he owned his own tool shop, he worked insanely long hours. Uh, no, the, where it says, he who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. He labored. And, and this was not an overnight sensation. The master was away for a long time. So in this doubling of money, it's not like hocus pocus, dominocus, poof, it's doubled, right? Uh, like I, I invested it in Apple and it went crazy. Or I, I bought this viral stock and it and, uh, went, went uh, through the roof and I made all this money. Um, yeah, we have images of these overnight internet billionaires, right? That's not what this is. These men worked. These servants labored. And, and they labored for a long time. And then the master comes back. And the, and the, uh, the third servant reveals what he thought of the master, that, that he always hated him. That he always thought less of him. That he always felt hard done by. That you gave me this work to do. He lived in his master's house. He lived off of his master's, the food on his master's table, but he wouldn't do the master's work. He received all these things from the master, but he wouldn't do the master's work. And and so, okay, out you go. Um, but, the, but those who labored, what do they have? Enter into the joy of your master and he gives them more work to do <laughs> he gives them double the work to do in fact what do you think about that it's monday you have work we're retired but we were busy yesterday thinking okay how's the work going to work that they're going to be 
what are we going to do this week? When is it raining? When can we work outside? When do we need to find projects inside? Because we have work to do. And there's other work that's less, less easy to define. What is it? Work is not the opposite of pleasure. I have made this mistake for many years. I have joked about work being a four letter word and uh, you know when and I know man believe me I know when you're tired of working uh, you're just like up to here. And yet because work is cursed since the fall there's weeds and and uh, thorns and thistles our work is not always as productive as maybe it would have been in the garden of Eden. And yet work is work is a pleasure. It is the opportunity to do things with the gifts and skills that God has given you, the opportunities. A person who is not working, they say, is a, a person of leisure, right? But the word leisure comes from the word for freedom. It means, it means being free or having capacity or having opportunity. Those are all uses of the old, old French, I think, uh, origins of the word for leisure. <clears throat> but a person who is free, if you're free, what should you do? If you're free, you should work. You are, you are put here to serve others. So the, the, one, the man with the one talent served himself. During the long time that the master was gone, he was eating at the master's table, serving himself. But the others were serving the master. Or, in, in making use of this, these talents, of this gold, they're serving others back and forth. Uh, we've talked before about what an economy is and how, how it goes back and forth and increases each time. And we are we bless one another in these exchanges, as I make what you need and you make what I need, uh, as we, as we uh, give one another of our time and our skill, and so that there is joy when you see something done well. Yesterday afternoon, I got to work on my on my deck again underneath the I've been trying to waterproof it so that the rain doesn't come through and it drains off to the side and uh, and I hadn't I hadn't done it right and I had a bunch of leaking here and there and so I went back and I read it a bunch of stuff and I'm waiting for the next rain it's supposed to rain this afternoon to see if my work is done but I expect and I feel good about it it looks better than it did uh, a day ago it feels good to see that you did it and now there is a space that people can be and they'll be dry and protected. It feels good to do your work and see that it is done well and it is a blessing to someone else. Work is not the opposite of pleasure. Work is pleasing to God and to your neighbor and it is pleasing to you when you see, ah, God has done a good thing through me. When you are at leisure, when you have the freedom, not, when you retire, you have the freedom to do different work, to, to serve different people. But I would venture to say, if your retirement is serving only yourself, you have lost your vocation. You've lost your calling. And, and you will lose the joy that comes with serving. Jesus tells this, this parable because the master's gone for a long time, but he comes back and, and there will be, well, I would say a reckoning, but I'd rather not think of it that way. There, there is this, uh, the, the gold watch, you know, the retirement party, the, the, uh, the celebration of look what you have done with what I gave to you. That'll be a wonderful part of when the Lord comes again. That we will say, well, there were some things we didn't do so well. But look what God has done. 
Look what he gave to us and look what it produced. Look at our children and our grandchildren who are in faith in Christ and have life forever. Look at, look at generations of people in other nations where the word has been proclaimed because we're using what God gave to us. What are you going to do today? Who's it going to bless today? Even work things. A meeting? A phone call? An email? Well, it's going to all bless somebody today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for our work. For everyone who watches this, it's something different. And in, in every day, it's something different. Thank you for the refreshment of all these different things that we can do when we touch the life of someone else. Lord, let us be a blessing today. Show us skills and gifts that we did not know were so so precious and valuable. But a few moments of our time, and of our attention and our love could mean so much to someone else. Lord, I pray especially for my my good friend Scott. Tomorrow he will begin new work uh, with a with a new congregation. Oh Lord, bless them together, so that in their labor together they may have joy. The joy of the Master. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.